Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Tatiana Lubovsky Acosta, and I'll be your host this evening. Um, we are here at in what poet Josiah Luis Alderete calls the Zoom Mundo, um, and here at the Poetry Center in the Zoom Mundo, celebrating the um, Poetry Center Book Award. And tonight we have Jay Dodd reading. Um, whose book, The Black Condition, featuring Narcissus, um, published by Night Boat Books in 2019, an irreverently tender profile of Black trans life surviving and thriving during contemporary political turmoil, was selected to receive the Poetry Center Book Award, and she'll be reading from her work tonight. Um, joining Jay is award judge Lourdes Figueroa, um, who's joining us from Oakland and she'll be reading from her own work and she'll be engaging in conversation with Jay. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce Lourdes um, by reading her bio. Lourdes Figueroa is author of Ruidos to Learn, Speak, Alley Cat Books, Resident Writers Collection, December, 2019, and Yolot, Spooky Actions, October, 2012. Her artistic work involves a series of poems, images, and collaborations that are a dialogue of Lourdes's lived experience when her family worked as migrant farm workers in Yolo County, California. Lourdes writes, overall, this is the writer that I am. My work tastes of pesticides, love, sweat, blood, and llanto. It relates to everything that we eat and are. It is about the stink of el asadón, the Queer and brown in El Asadon, everything to do with la equis on our bodies, the femicide around us, the femicide of our earth, and the nopal on my forehead. Quite honestly, it is a life of migration equaling love. The poems are in constant conversation with each other, like the descendants of the nopal. They are the ancient, unremembered human heart. What inspired me to write was and is survival. And you can find more at lordesfigueroa.net. And with that, I would like to introduce Lourdes. Buenas noches, good evening. Um, I'm very grateful to be here. Um, I can't say that enough. Um, and I think it's always good to be, to start off with, with gratitude. Um, and um, this is an incredible celebration for Jay's um, incredible work. Um, and I'm very grateful they had the opportunity to read their work and um, to be part of this. Um, with that said, I am just gonna dive in and then um, we'll go from there. Acompáñame al nacimiento de the shoot of the wheat, the bud of the corn, birth of Tosible, daughter of. Nawa girl, born on the fence of iron and rust. Nawa girl, born on the center of the vagas. There is coal in your mouth. As we wander across the forest, they have told us that there is gold and silver in the heart of the tree but we dig underneath the tunnel of the volcano to find a juggler vein with a mouth there it spits out fields of the sugar cane. Now a girl brew the agave, the galleon sits amidst, she calls it occidental. There are oceans between us as we learn to swallow bourbon. There were hundreds of chicotazos on her back. Now a girl, your skin is changing. It glistens under the five moons, under the five suns. We have arrived. The cotton fields have made us golden. We are ancient in our song, Nawa girl. I've come to talk to you again. You were planted in my brain when I remember my father in Manzanillo, the sand dorándose under the sun. He held us in the water. Smile, laugh, dance, he said. Dance, say yolot. Talked to him this morning, heard of the ruffle of the leaves behind the stump of the fig tree. He is hiding. 
Silence, say your lord. My master's pendejo. He just stepped out of segunda vida, so sure of himself. Your lord, you keep putting your palms together. And though I've come to talk to you again, our throats are full. Whisper, say your lord. It takes several falls before we can stand. I don't know how to make sentences. I keep listening to how the water drips from the faucet. Yolot, you let the water run so I couldn't hear him. But I could hear how you talk to him. A voice, a chirp. No one is getting high tonight. The dealer is outside, my mama says. I don't care if we find him under a bridge. I can't figure out your will. What is it that you want? Your throat is tight, so is your lung. Everything is poem, say Yolot. The vision of manzanillo and honey. One more relapse out of 31. Yolot, I don't think you remember. I lashed out my teeth, tore into you. Your forehead bleeding, I lunged out my fist into your belly. So thick standing still, you said stand. Imagine yourself as the eye of the typhoon. You said laugh, smile, dance. Mi hija. Vacía me despierto, me duermo, los ojos lambando, las pestañas, qué lengua mira, gira, pero mira, andando anda, hundiéndose en el ombligo de la canción, la palabra embarrada de lodo, y el nombre encerrado entre las costillas y el pecho, los senos se cuelgan, leche no tienen. Most of these pieces are pieces from um, the chapbook Yolot. Um, and Yolot in Nahuatl uh, means young girl heart. Um, from this distance, we are making love. The moon sits on her half, brings a cigarette to her mouth. The act of rolling in the tobacco burns the esophagus. El chicote sits next to the wall, wooden walls that hold in our hummings. As we go in and out of each other, our skin was red then, our skin is red now. But further in, we find el tambor tamboreando al paisano, pasando el pasaje de isla a isla. We are pochas fucking under the belly of the ship that carries us with the memory in the pores of our bodies. We are not that far apart, de la madre y de la madre tierra. And the longer we make love, the further the color of our body turns. Let us kiss once more before the moon becomes full to guide us through the land in between the rivers. As the corners of our ears are sliced off, we will gather the seeds of the tobacco. Lamiendo en limbo, tongue licks eye, fog's tongue. Yo no fui la primera. A dry birth, dice la María. Un nacimiento pero seco, says la María, is the hardest. A blood birth in the bag, empty bag. Primero los pies, but why do we land with our heads first, our feet last? Skin wet and red. Is it because we notice them now? But they have always been there. The feet dancing, dust, dirt sucking in the folds of the callus like the belly skin of the chayote, crowning. The bag barely had water, but enough to thicken the growth, a swell of Spanish breath mimicking the sound of English as la migra officers pile into the tomato fields. In the back are ama in the closet that looks like a wall. Maria flew across the border to fill up with something, overstayed and couldn't cross back. Tongues, then feet crossing over, smacking back and forth. But a wet birth is easier, dice la Maria. As the water rushes through, the head is easier to push out and the feet slide out last as they should. Yeah, most of these poems are untitled. They just move with each other. Um, and yeah, they're old poems, but um, I'm always bringing them up and blending them with something else. <laughs> I think of her and how we remember each other when we first learned to make love, licking la cima del trigo in the place of the seven caves, rompiendo the callus of the hoe. Her navel sunk, as the eye licked the rim of the ear. In Temacan, Teosintle heard us, fed us the poem, made of song and breath. 
In mi clan, the voices are sweet like the ripples of the lake. Color, pur color plum are his lips. I put salt and lemon on plums. Where are you from? I like to always say I am from the tomato fields, but I'm from California. I hate California. Hush, I secretly love it there. Texas is my home. I haven't come out here in over 18 years. There's whiskey on his lips. He slurs, leans over. My brother has leukemia. Oh, I'm sorry. But there was a time where I tattooed three tears just there, right above the cheek and the curve of the bone. See right there, see where? Really close to the eye. It's really tender there. It is our most ancient and truest form. I tattooed myself in red and black ink. I wasn't angry. I haven't spoken to my brother in 18 years. Maria says, no sé qué hacer con él. Ya no sé, estoy cansada. Y sus hijos ya no le dicen nada. Si sale, no regresan toda la noche, she says. Le gusta ir a donde le pican la cola. A marriage is a marriage, she says. We have three boys together three boys, but poems wither and die. What does that say about our essence, our being? I don't know, but if you look far enough into that distance, you will find yourself in a crowd surrounding a beach whale because of the low tide. There's a sound that she makes. She makes a sound against the wet of the sand. Her lips are purple and torn. She starts wondering if we are just poems of God. When we frame, when we look to see them, we want to see them disappear as they turn past the bushes. En las yemas de la lengua la busco, en la cima de la semilla del trigo la busco, en la lengua de la semilla de teosidne te lambo. Let us believe in the shoot of the wheat in the budding poppy. Hoy le ruego que me recuerde in the palpitation. I dreamed of us walking through rows of apple orchards. I held the hoe, you kissed my upper lip, gave me a gun, we danced a vals, we bowed and prayed. The earth reeked of coal. Under the cold moon, you stuck your tongue in my ear. Put the barrel to your heart. Sin canción, held out your hand full of maíz. Amigo, entre sus granos nos buscamos allí. The trigger pulling the finger to point the barrel. Voice soft in my eyes. We stopped dancing. We stopped praying. You said the trigger pulled the finger to the red of the poppy. Amigo, en mi sueño lo encontré. Hoy en el día, I seek you to see me as you saw me in there. The fields are charred cold. The orchards have lost their branches. Amigo, por cuáles rumbos se encuentra hoy? Amigo, of what parts are we of? Though you walked to me in the honey of manzanillo waters, I noticed you walking in the corners of my mother's breath, the cream of your skin against the walls she built around you. And she built around you so you wouldn't cave in, her heart already like the eye of the typhoon. She crossed borders to save our Abba. But you see, Yolo, I never knew you were in me until I saw my Abba sitting for three days across the glass door, rocking back and forth. You tumbled out through the smoke of my eyes. My ama whispering, leave him alone. Picked up my hands, placed them on the walls around you. Grasped my throat, your fingers brown. You smelt of my ease then. Now I can't tell when you walk around me. The smoke of you is of dusty tomatoes. Yolo, I am seeking your will. Could it be so tragic, these things to cross over? Will you come with me? so we could see it again. Find the places where my ama hid from La Migra. Find the places where my apa learned to get high. Here I know the places, in the tomato fields at dusk, the sky spinning purples, my abuelita sucking in her cigarette, the apple orchards, arms heavy, before the sun. Where are we going? Yolot, your face is almost visible. I could touch your lips but I want to see the color of your eyes. I know your hands so well. They have so many lines, callous bumps. Inside, they are warm.
I want to read two more poems. Um, this next poem is, um, I don't know, for some reason, um, I bring it to almost every reading that I can. And, um, and it's a poem that I dedicated to, to my friend Theo, who passed away many years ago. Um, so here you go. A memory of Theo and a city. Begin city here. Imagine, if you will, the pink afterglow of a cityscape, the beginnings of a dream and a memory, pitching dark blue shadows that resemble the birth of Teotihuacan and the beginning of time. Imagine, if you will, the open palms of children grasping the tips of Jerusalem, mumbling dreams through walls, creating a Juarez with blooming, blooming tulips and the marching sounds of migrants becoming the heart of a soul and the soul of a city so similar to you. But imagine the cityscape of a thousand voices a thousand times over, a thousand years young, a thousand years older. Come and let me open a video where I, can, I will tell you a story of a simple memory, so distant it belongs to the stars and so ancient that it is written in the wrinkles of your hands and the curves of your hips. Come, let me lead you through tunnels and deserts, through fences and walls, through the Zona Rosa de Guadalajara, and landscapes of nopal and beautiful drag queens, beautiful dykes and fags, beautiful brown black bodies, beautiful you where the flap of the monarch's wings dwells. There you and I watching the morning light. Come, let us watch the silhouette of our faces become the very streets of the city we love. Begin memory here. My memory shifts every time I remember home. De hecho de menos, me fui a buscar nuestro sueño. It had rhythms of cumbia, this city of ours. All I wanted was a raw land. Un cuerpo marimacha. Bio came to San Francisco to be an artist. I came to fall in love. Bio spoke Tagalog, loved my Spanish. He was brown soft-spoken. Migration, he said, is what birds do to survive. We uprooted ourselves for love. I keep tripping over borders. I keep remaking his face. He wanted to go back. He was a painter. All animals move. I don't think we ever had roots. Here in this city, the lights were long, the streets curvy. He loved to remind us of the campesinos on the outskirts how the Filipino migrant farm workers tilled the soil alongside Mexican migrant farm workers tending to the orchards and the tomato fields. It was dirt. What do you do when things fall apart? I came from the fields, landlocked. Bio came from the islands. We were raw, imagining a world longer than ours, where the buildings stood like stone while we moved. Cumbia in our hearts, the sweet dance of Mexican polka in our ears. No, the light was different here than there. Here the light mimicked us, making our faces as clear as daylight. And Pio passed away, leaving us this city. La agua se hace negra, agua ardiente nos calma. I keep dislocating my tongue, it feels lonely. I am lonely. Pio died alone refusing to bear weight on us. I imagine that he must have wanted to be buried here where we dream. The truth is we're all lonely. Eres hermosa. He died in the hospital waiting room, waiting. And to said, how far have we roamed to make each other? There is no cityscape older than this one where the ocean meets the earth where you refuse to go back because to uproot a tree, it takes several bodies. There is always a piece of root left. And I stood over his body like elephants do when they grieve one of their own. Here, the water is sweet, like the ripples of the lake. I could never afford to build my own house here. It is dusty with bones, mouths gaping, sometimes the smells of Manila or Mexico City. We were glorious here. We are nothing. 
Bio was a dishwasher, Bio was a cook, Bio was an artist like you and I. This city is everything, holy land of milk, of honey, Mecca. Babylon, or was it Saddam on the outskirts of Teotihuacan in the Sun Pyramid? Brown bodies, black bodies, dyke bodies, fag bodies, hookah bodies, our name, our non-bodies, you and I roaming San Francisco with our white tongues, painters, lovers, poets. You and the city, me and the city, Ciudad Ambrienta, where we flower like the rose and die like the tulip. Sin papeles, how do we go back? Sin rumbo, donde tu ser es ilegal. We are everything. Now close your eyes. There are birds migrating to make sense of these movements. What you heard was um, my puppy. She's seven months. There she goes. It's okay, baby pie. Okay, and this is the final poem. When the stars did not gleam and the darks of us were being, there was Yolot learning to pace across black oceans. She held dirt in her palm and light in her mouth. She asked ungleaming stars to walk with her and they walked with her, mouthing her lips to see if they could understand the light she carried. And they followed her back and forth across the massiveness of the darks. They felt her rhythm reaching over to her. They put their cheeks on the curve of her waist, felt her plump as she moved with them. And they moved with her warming their cheeks, warming their throats. Finally, she stopped. She let them collide into her. The light in her mouth spilled, they having their lips wide open, swallowed. And they began to gleam. So excited were they that they ran across the universes to find the others. And they began to make curves like her waist, rounding the curves they learned to make moons. And they taught the moons how to move like Yolot moved. And Yolot rubbed her earth all over her body and she scattered herself, making mothers upon mothers, each and every one containing her rhythms. And she, Yolot, let herself be as it all danced with her. And she danced making drums of their skins and she looked at herself and them and saw their skins gleam like the dark oceans and the stars. Thank you. Um, Thank you so much, Lourdes, for that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Jay. Jay, are you ready? OK. Jay Dodd is a Black trans woman from Los Angeles, California, now based in Portland, Oregon. She's a literary and performance artist. Her work has appeared, will appear, in Broadly, The Establishment, Entropy, Lit Hub, Boat Press, Duende, and the Poetry Foundation, among others. She is the executive director for Dove Song Labs, a development of Winter Tangerine, editor of A Portrait in Blues, um, Platypus Press, 2017, author of Manish Tongues, Platypus Press, 2017, and The Black Condition featuring Narcissus. She came out from Night Boat in 2019 and is the book that we're celebrating this evening. She has been a Pushcart Prize nominee and co-editor of Bettering American Poetry. Her visual and written work has been featured in West Hollywood, Portland's Institute of Contemporary Art, Teen Vogue, and Entropy. She's also a volunteer gender terrorist and artificial intellectual. You can find her talking trash online or taking a selfie. Everyone, Jay Dodd. You're muted. How about that? Can you hear me? Someone in the chat say hi. You can hear me. Great part. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you so much, Lawrence, for that um, amazing reading and, and the, the, the both like geographic and historic and familial scapes you crafted um, and beautiful to sit through and navigate and rest in. Um, so I appreciate you sharing your work and for choosing my work um, to be featured in this way. I, uh, as I said, have a lot 
better shit online. And one of the things that I've been very much so uh, feeling distraught about is sort of like a lack of recognition. And so this has really uh, been a long time honor that I've wanted. I'm so honored to be here in the space with you. Um, I'm going to read, I decided to read from um, all like published things, have this material moment, um, but I'm going to choose select, selected poems from my first book, Manage Tones, um, this zine, 17 Allegations, and then finish with selections from the Black Edition. Um, but before I go forward, I have to shout out that my mom is here, and I'm so excited um, to be able to read from my mom, and also uh, my daughter for this tournament is watching, and it's live in studio with me. I'm in studio because I didn't want to shoot this from home um, because my room is a mess. Or, sorry, mom. But anyways, thank you so much again for having me. Um, I'm going to just give you this work as only I know how. how. Trick. In the right light, my body is reflected, unevenly distributed at an angle of severity while your mind betrays. Take solace from the blinding, the disorienting prism called mind, called fixture, becoming illusion, how breath becomes sleight of hand. My body is a part of a trick called survival, and I know which card you pick, second guess, all you know is real. Can you believe your eyes? Behind the door you didn't open, I am waiting. Distraction in the spectacle of pleasure. Look closely or miss the con, miss the grift as my right hand bleeds from the palm, wound wide, my left tightens to a fist. Check over your shoulder, look under your seat, behind your ear, I manifest loose change reparation for indulging my fiction, the never ending noose I pull from my throat, the way my feet hang just above the ground, call it levitation. Now, Watch carefully, hold the saw, see the edges glittering and sharp. See how the slightest caress draws blood. See how I split serrated down the spine, a supple magic holding incantations of immortal ancestry, a silent lineage of divine bodies. The only deception I am able to master, the vanishing act. Axis Mundi, it's a, uh, this is the Latin phrase for a place where heaven touches earth. Because heaven touches earth at the tip of my tongue, passage in omen like sage, burn me to combust and bear witness to the ashes. Because heaven touches earth right below my jawline, the prophets have told you about my body, the good testament, my tender verse is lullaby, hymn, incantation. Because heaven touches earth at the center of my back, spread, belly to holy ground, sacrifice of praise, here, angelic host, singing glory, commandment made miracle. Ars po po Poetica in the poetic tradition is just a poem about poetry. <clears throat> Every poem is a death. And each stanza an economy built on an ocean floor covered in bones, like these words. Every poem is those same words choking on loose teeth and salt water. Every poem is ship and sea and sail, a cargo passage, or the vessel obliged with displacing the poet's form. Every poem costs some mass, some measure, requires a body to expose itself, a grammar called recompense. Every poem is a rhetorical interrogation of how many questions can you fit in your mouth, or if the jaw learns to unhinge, how will it hang? Heavy and full, ripe fig on low branch. Each poem is the pit, the seed, the fresh and the molding, then the molding, delineate the harvest before the drought, or every poem is masturbation the gesture of naming in so many ways, crafted meter stroke in lyric and verse and still every poem, even in its most spectacular excitement must know how to finish itself off. I think, I think, I think, yes. Maybe, because my mom is here, I'm making another mommy poem, but I want to do a different mommy. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, no, I'll do the OG. Mommy, this is for you. Origin story for Rodney King and my mother. 
I was born between an earthquake and riot of a goddess called mother who forged me like sweet cornbread from the warmth in her hips. She say I widened her, say 18 hours of labor, say my head split her body, say black clouds of nappy hair and eyes of fire in her arms. This is not a mythology. Before my newborn coronation, the first earthquake to hit California in 92, book a geography preparing for battle. Los Angeles was to burn again. I was born on the coastline of shifting burning forests, lengths of breath while we shudder in resonance. I was born into a geography of black folk rebuilding monuments of possibility under fully loaded eyes and tongues and guns where they beat a king on camera for a city's ransom again. Los Angeles is a city with a history of burning. This is not a mythology. This is the only story I know from my body, born of broken earth into a city, breaking and burning. The goddess called mother say I didn't cry much, say I looked like her midnight dream the day I was conceived, say she knew I was gonna be a boy, say she asked God what she gonna do with this boy, say this water breaking comes unspeakable labor, comes aftershock, comes splitting, comes black boy, comes black girl, comes riot, comes fire, comes birth, Um, this is out of order because time does not matter. This zine was created after the Black condition, um, but I wanted uh, a bit of experimentation in the middle of this otherwise rigorous work. Um, and so I created a poetic form where the number of stanzas, the number of syllables in each stanza, and the number of lines total all have a mathematical relationship. Um, I can talk more about that later, but here we are. These are 17 obligations. They're all my quote unquote trans poems. This is transparency, which means to cross appear. In the mirror, she appears as I graze her stomach. This angle, faith is enough, glass barrier. Between maybe material and most of me can be happy. Between cellophane, si sex siren, I lust for open source lovers. All my underneath light exposed, reflected back to me through illusion. Not every mirror is a parallel dimension. Sometimes the other side just is. Translucence, which means to cross shine. I'm the reflection of something that is. I lit this fantasy myself. I need you to see it like I do at least once. Don't lie to me. I know the flimsy when I write it. Ethereal epidermis and edict on everything that evaporates. Skin of unshowable vet, face of feature fabrication, full-time fixture. Think of how long light takes to travel across space. All we recognize is the very diffusion, the slight slice of spectrum we call our vision naked. Despite density, we all appear as films, screams, scrims, stages, veins, and crosses seen through lux light. Imagine the appearance of a thing, but not the thing itself. This is how we are taught to love. What can be projected from imagination? A truth will travel slower than the speed of light. Space is more expansive than I'd ever be. I am the reflection of something that is. The last poem I'll read from this uh, is a dense one, but it's intentionally bad. This is called Trans Life. Obviously. We stay believing lies, so I feel some type of way about teaching this lesson. Learn a language that I can speak anywhere but home autobiographically. Gibberish, jumble, function, distorts, dysfunction, retorts. Y'all not gonna listen, so. I wanted to begin this lyric with a fuck you. In the beginning, matter made history by bribing the now with the yet to be. Marker, recognizable self, dead names in real time. Life's calling us mechanic, copacetic aesthetics, a static staccato, still tipping point politic. Play my whole hands polemic, population of peril, of people, possible pleasures, partial poses, posit a continuance continuum, contained by catastrophe, pulling creation up to the cellular leveling labor, lynch light speed libido, oral archives, an elder untold telling 
tail spin tales from dust under tongues somewhere where we can be seen and not heard. About time we got something, no roses. That's why I began so antagonistic. I am allergic to most flowers, but mostly guilt. The witness sickness alignment, neutral, chaotic, curable questions, camaraderie costs. So I keep keeping my own economic options open. Ecology and obtuse outer lands, margin magic, majora makes shapeshifter suspect. Spectral, spectral spectacle speaks easy. Enter here, spatial haven, ether estuaries predating the words, the body predicated elsewhere. There, the empirical evidence suggests everything has eventually happened, had been happening. Happy ending, event ender, this ain't about death. I can talk about life and representation all damn day, but y'all covered that poorly. At the pulse of the movement is taken by a doctor who misgenders you. Healthcare at risk, hearth carry cumbersome between communicable disaster, desire, dissection, the only autonomous act of practicality left. Practitioners of the impalatable and all-encompassing patronage, pocket-sized prayer books, pliable particularities do play a long analogy of wiring or plumbing or revisionist advanced placement anyway. We want so little more than wanting to want, to want, to want, to want, to fuck, to eat, to sleep, to cry, to want, to laugh, to need, to hate, to want, to want. I want to end this with the refrain. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck. You get it, right? Um, I'm going to drink some water and then we're going to get into the black condition. Thank you again for choosing this um, most mature work. Also, my earbuds, for some reason, no matter what side in I put them in, they just love to dance out of my ear. But that's interesting. Yeah. For context, um, I set up the Black Condition featuring Narcissus in their tradition of Rufus featuring Shaka Khan. So imagine the Black Condition with poems that aren't titled with Narcissus as sort of like the band playing um, that Narcissus is a solo voice being featured. I know I've been changed after LaShawn Pace Rhodes. If you haven't seen LaShawn Pace, LaShawn Pace Rhodes perform this, go on YouTube and look up I Know I've Been Changed um, by her and uh, it'll change your life. Uh, it'll change your life. It did. Didn't it? No longer can you call me a beast of this earth. This tender flesh is not satisfied by the harvest in my mouth, now abundant, milk and honey. I've crossed barren waste for holier land because I am an angel now. The blood of my body made snow white robe, all gilded miracle. My new language is flight at my shoulder blades and expanding without ache. Why this freedom? This body prophesied transfiguration, called itself divine, called the streets alabaster, called baptism the afternoon. I ain't what I used to be, made new, made sacrament and fear. No longer confined to sensations or consequence, no longer concerned about the failings of mortality. I know I've been changing. You can't tell me no better. You will call me out myself blasphemous, but I've heard on high my body is harmonic gospel. It was written in sacred memory before coming into being. Now I am here ready for rapture. Because the angels in heaven done sign my name. I said the angels in heaven done sign my name. This next piece is a series of poems that is very important to me called Manual. Um, for those of you who follow me on social media, uh, my name is Jazz Hands, um, both as an allusion to the Bring It On trilogy movie where it was a, a, a meme black guy doing jazz hands, but also just like the, the razzmatazz I think that exists in that cultural icon and also my nails are always over. So, manual. Hand me, hand this, hand that, hand here, hand up, hand down, hand high, hand low, hand off, hand to, hand back, hand held, hand gun, hand cuff, 
hand blade, hand of God, hand to God, hand that feeds, hand to hand, hand to mouth, hand choke, hand grab, hand over heart, hand over fist, hand hip, hand thigh, hand under the table, hand warm, hand cold, hand ache, hand love, hand red, hand my, hand black. Manual labor. My mama ain't never been above hard work. She come from sharecroppers, enslaved niggas, a lineage of labor. Took 18 hours from me. She says she's so proud because she never seen a girl without a job. But she never seen my hands calloused either. I know so little of hard labor. I have found offices in loose tie casual wear as comfort, been an experienced nigga, having long understood economy. Niggas always marvel at my hands, like how they so soft. The hardest thing I did as a child was dance. These hands have always been soft things, the signal to be otherwise unaware how my work is required to hold me. Manual litany. What if God was something that could be held in the hand with us here, a present thing, birth now a heavenly place? Here we here hold close the divine. We a people to be held, hands to God. We entangle ourselves together. Our instruction is simple. Hold one another close. This is neighbor and lover and kin. We hold each other as possible. Too soon a trespassing. Unburden our hearts. All of this a manicured chorus. High above, pour out, feed us. We grow new and whole again. Manual instructions on dying. First, wear a white linen suit, black linen shirt, black loafers, $5 sunglasses from the garment district, hold court. This is a commencement. Or a blue suit, ill-fitting but filled, final interview. The shock will come from nowhere, your hands a flailing miracle wound, and you be assassinated, right? Or lay still in your bed, naked. They will find you beautiful. You arrest. Your skin is soft as ever, just now cold. Hear them tell it, speak of you as you are. Isn't that your favorite lament? Manual manicure. Acrylics from down the street, black mat this time. My thumbs are blistering before they a callous, swollen, stained, and turmeric. And my mother asked about my smoking. I tell her it's not what she thinks, but I guess it is from the lighters, stubborn, now split and peeling. My hands are soft, pretty gifts for my mother, the blistering, my own stubbornness, but I keep them delicate and soft. Otherwise, girls tell me how my nail beds are beautiful, how pretty my fingers look. My mother is often taken with how pretty my hands look when I hold things. Manual play. Hand me a man and I will hold that man. He will be manhandled, for I know how to handle a man. My hands have handled men. Men know my hands. Men have caught my hands. Men have held my hands. I have held men in my hands. Men mine being held and I hand hold them. Hands held together, holding back. Men holding men back with hands held up by other hands. Hand me a man's hand and I will hold him. Like healing is possible in the palm of a hand. Hold me, please. Your hands a haven, a holding pattern hovering over mine. Hold my hand. Hold me in your hand. I am a small and playful thing. Hand me myself. Hold me to a man. Manually. I've imagined these hands a liberation, dreaming of, of a swallowing universe. Holding here and now, I remember how the body cannot choke itself. Still. There are other ways of betrayal outside of the body, a power in the hands. The boys don't want to take you out, taking a life taken. The body prays itself handled, held, these hands caught up, catch freedom. That was manual. Um, this next one is a political poem because we're living in a time where things matter. But I wrote this very long ago. This is in Intelligence, which is a portmanteau of intelligence and inelegance. Um, and it's conspiracy theory. So I'm going to say a lot of wild shit. But I mean, some of it. I mean, all of it. You'll, you'll get it. You can make almost a million dollars by killing one angel outside his house. The deep state is located in a police locker room. 
They plan war games over dinner. This is not a lie. This could be a lie, but our destruction is definitely an inside job or at least CIA funded. They built super predator soldiers out of crack and dollar bills, hang them out to dry in the street for four hours. A black man can be assassinated sleeping in his bedroom, shot next to his wife and unborn. A black girl can be taken sleeping on her grandmother's couch. These aren't lies. These aren't accidents. These, these aren't images or illustrations between the lines. Living black is a federal offense. Some free handouts from my government name. The prison industrial complex can melt still beams. The alt-right killed JFK. Every sleeper cell in America is a group of white boys watching The Daily Show trying to not masturbate to each other's inadequacies. The conspiracy is calling it art instead of news, declaring life is an act of terrorism. Your house is not your home unless it is secure. This is a lie. Your house is not your home unless it is on fire. This is a lie. Your house is never your home. All you have is the fire. They don't teach us the real reason we never sing past the last verse of the national anthem. Slavery wasn't so bad if we profited from it. Black people are always late because we are stuck in the middle of the ocean indefinitely. The world is scheduled to end yesterday. The doomsday clock doesn't consider colored people time. We've already lived through an apocalypse, but this is all a simulation run by a select group of endangered lizards to control the stock exchange. This could be a lie. Facts are meant to be broken. Rules are meant to be disproved. Truth can be tailored with the right measurements. Tongues can be cut with the right language. Lies can be sown with the right history. Language is the last organic, organic thing to grow on the planet. All things can still name themselves arbitrary. This is not a lie. Which common sense do you use here? Does this not resemble what you call nonsense? All through the sky, such treacherous imagery. Assume that every camera has already taken your face, plastered it on the wall, writes your name in its journal, doodles hearts around your visage. This is a lie. But every camera does identify you by your bad side on a tiny screen in an undisclosed location. The panopticon is being updated. It's a madness, constantly looking over your shoulder to find a void. They listen to how you speak to yourself and make sure all messages, messages are transmitted. It is in the water. It is in the wires. It is in the air. Filter the rain. Everything is contaminated. Our immune systems are failing. The land can't call in sick. There has to be something hurling toward us that we don't now know about. Dear sky and midnight mask, we ask for devastation to strike us down. The moon landing wasn't a stage, but NASA has been colonizing since the 60s. All Martians on reservations and Venusians are being brought over by the space load. We missed the first contact by looking at the wrong abyss. They were already here. They already left. They didn't like what they saw. They found all the undonated bombs we left scattered around the house and realized we were the savages in the galaxy. The earth is not flat, though I couldn't tell you differently. This is a lie. Satellites are real. They hover. Ghosts above a hostile atmosphere. Say three Hail Marys and cover your heart in aluminum foil. The communion wine is locally grown from gentrified soil, but bread ink has subsidized the body of Jesus. Too much food, too much of the food we eat is plastic. This is not a lie. There are wood chips in your Parmesan cheese. Gum chewers are 14 times as likely to have a mound of Play-Doh the size of a tennis ball in their stomach. That was a lie. The water is safe to drink. I'm not sure how the truth works here. The water was safe to drink today, but last week it was not. This is not a lie. The water needs to be tested. Not sure how pipes work here. The water needs to be tested again, but it has returned the previous levels of acceptable contamination. This is not a lie. They have poisoned whole cities. This is not a lie. They don't want liberty or injustice for y'all. This is a lie. They sell liberty and justice, but it's a Ponzi scheme of identity politics and the real working class. There's no civility in democracy. They want you to believe your vote counts. They want you to not be able to vote. They are trying to count you out. A watch list grows of those who won't survive in America. I have about three more. And we're going to be out of here. Or for questions. So thank you for vibing. This next one is um, ooh, this one. 
This next one is called Exhibition. And this is a form poem. The, uh, the form is called a pantoon. And so um, various lines are repeat, repeated and echoed in a pattern. It's not super important, but for the public to care, their homes. Exhibition. When I show you the illicit behind the fiber optic veil, obstruction is a kind of foreplay. Yes, this is an intentional seduction. This behind is a fiber optic veil. I built an economy on anything I can. Yes, this intentional seduction is supposed to be a delight. Build this economy on anything you can. My taste is acquired, so take your time. Suppose this is a delight, the mystery yours to solve. You take and taste my acquired time, take the wilts from my lips. You the only mystery, you the only mystery unsolved, and I can never stop questioning my mouth. Take all that wilts my lips. Whenever when every fantasy I try leaves me dead, I can never stop talking about my mouth here. My tongue is vile and tomorrow. They leave me dead in every fantasy I try. The overgrown prophecy I am to witness. Vile becomes tongued here and tomorrow. Some end time we have already faced. The prophecy lives to overgrow the witness. No future belongs to my body. These end times we already face. My testimony is the absolute of what I know. I belong to the future in my body. Will truth survive the transmission? I testify in absolutes what I cannot know. What do we make of this delay? What will survive the transmission? Reveal the half-life of the illicit. Unmake myself as a means of delay. Watch for the obstructive foreplay. Um, thank you. Like I said, my, my daughter is with me in the studio. And it's a blessing to have someone. Um, this is a Narcissus poem. Uh, I guess we did, we did only one. No, this is one of. Yes, I have. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to read this poem, another Narcissus, and then I'm going to read an uh, excerpt from Black Condition, the, the final poem. Uh, so, three more. Narcissus stunts for the void and becomes a flower. I'm a genius and I won't say that again. You won't believe me anyway. What is brilliance in a vacuum? To think I would be so enamored with mortal bubblings. Before I knew what I was, I was, and knowing was the best thing for me. Yet, after knowing what I am, I am and will be all I have left. I'm the coagulation of so much wonder. This body been a bitch, I just call her one now. I write my own anthems, make you sing them back to me. Listen to me now, but hear what you want anyway. I almost forget the earth is cosmic too, that I am hung in the same galaxy of which you claim has no end. A good, a good night's rest is just a temporal death. Telling myself there's something beyond here gets me through the night. I have left enough beautiful portraits to remember me by. I dare this world to take me out completely. You can't obliterate what never was. I am as forgotten as I am lied upon, or I lie to myself in believing I deserve memory. I am made up of all who believed or still do, who tell my tale or will. In my place, a flower will take the poet's eye, ashes to daffodils, prepare the taxonomy for my kind. I will settle in the abyss, not more unforgiving than the river. I am made up of all the offerings to the dead of each season restoring, telling myself that there is nothing beyond wanting to be better than myself, that I can bloom in the wood. This next one is also to my mommy. Shout out, mommy. This is Narcissus to mother. You believed I was <laughs> sorry. You believed I was beautiful before I did because you knew when you told me I wish the beauty you saw was yours. I believed it was. I believe I couldn't carry it the way you fill a room. I wish my body, the expansive extreme, would apply grace to every crevice inside your hands. How my hands hold your beauty, how they always say my face does, when your expression is another kind of freedom I've only seen captured. You saw me the night I manifested inside of you. This is how I will always be yours. I want to be every dream you believe in while, while others marred them in tar and twisted dismissal. I want to be the question you refuse to answer in the face of every man who tried. I want to sit between you and a world that refuses to praise you. How those who bask in your grace dwell peacefully in a kind of heaven. Because of you, I cannot fear this earth. 
what is death and raised by internal. And now for um, a little bit for Black Ambition. I'm not going to read the screenshots and give you the, the long context. If you have enjoyed, you should definitely grab the book and, and get into it. I'm just going to read the uh, next an, an excerpt that I can. Thank you again for having me in this time and for all the work learning and witnessing. I am interested in the Black condition or the dark state, the ebony shape, the sable order, the circumstances of owning the complete absorption of light, the opposite of regard for safety or well being. There are so many ways to condition, control, govern, touch, treat, prime, temper, acclimate. There is no way to just black, see alternatives, cold black, pitch black, not white, dark, absent of. Black control, govern black meaning the Black be uncontrollable or Black be ungovernable, condition the governed Black controllable. Black touch, touch Black, touching Black to Black, a Black touch, a touch Black, treat Black as Black, a Black treatment, Black prime, prime for Blackness, priming Black, the prime of Black. Black temper, ebony, rage, sable, fury, Temper, black, temper, rage, temper, fury. Black acclimate or blacklimate or black climate or black ocean evaporates into the black sky and rains down to the black earth and black grows again. Oh, the dying of black earth. A collective of blacks cannot be a pathology. We cannot be a construction of unmade things. I wanted to call this work, you're going to be exposed, but in exposing you, I'm exposing my own condition. I'm conditioned to make sense of pathology, your eyes, your mouth, so interested in the Black condition. The Black condition here, meaning 10 years of Black dick in your mouth convincing you, I too needed to know what your mouth do. The Black condition is your mouth, white and wide and famished, needing a reason to make demons of all of which you feed. An obsession with language for the impossible. A fear of my mouth giving away my fear. My mouth being a spectacle of its own right. Meaning my mouth as truth teller and body pleaser. Meaning my body pleases whether I like it or not. My body is my body where I like it or not. My condition is believing my body could be mine. My black body is mine most in my mouth. I condition my body to obsess over itself, make black a necessary fixation. Tell me I'm impossible and I'll show you my lips. My condition is a language I hope you never learn to figure out. Your mouth will forever be fixed wrong. There is no dialect for wandering eye or wet mouth. And even here, I have given my condition to your gaze, caught in your interest. I'm obsessed with being seen when I'm told I am invisible, when I'm told I can be held, treated. Thank you all so much. Should I bring my mic on? I can hear you by now. So. Yeah, I'm just blinking because right now I feel I'm like overwhelmed. Just buy it. Everyone buy it. Everyone buy it. First <laughs> let, me, let, let me read the chat. I, I wasn't reading the chat there because I can't. Focus. Oh, read the chat. Read the chat. Okay. I'll read the chat. I'll read the chat. Wow. Wow. Y'all was spitting that down on there. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, my God. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to have space for questions or comments or anything? Yeah, it, it's eight o'clock. Um, oh, word. Yeah, but you know, I think, like, I personally, I'm not poetry center, you know, I'm just some foo. But I personally would love to hear the two of you talk because there are some incredibly beautiful connections with your poetry um both of you have you both of you work in this like exquisite cosmography um jay i feel like your poetry is like this ever expanding body 
that is like continuously shape shifting and creating and devouring. Um, and Lord of this, I feel like you have this taxonomy that is like absolutely exquisite um, and reminds me of just like indigenous science, <laughs> especially like the Yolo poems. Um, but yeah, I just, I also just want to hear, hear y'all talk, but <laughs> I don't have a question for either of you. I just want to like continue to fawn, I guess, is, is what I'm saying. Um, I mean, um, I have like, I have my notes of um, when, when I was reading Jay's work and um, what Jay took me to. Um, and if you guys feel okay. Yeah, no, like, no, I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I love to hear sort of, sort of where, what, 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 what questions the work really brought out for you in your own personal either practice or life, or if you had any questions about how I, how I came to a place, I would love to expand there if you have space for that. I do. Um, I mean, I will start with saying with um, speaking body into existence is Duende. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly um, what you're doing. Um, your voice is necessary. Um, When I was, you know, just beginning to do my marks on a page and then um, I went off to college, um, I discovered um, Gloria Anzualda. Gloria Anzualda gave me the language to, um, to write the way I write. Uh, and Gloria Anzualda is, a queer, she's a descendant of queer, also queer migrant farm workers, um, lesbian, queer, um, and Mexican American. And um, in reading your work, I found that same place where there's this language that is, that needs, that needs to exist and is existing and is becoming because we are narrating our bodies into history, a history that, that we, that all around us, it's, um, it's a language that doesn't relate to who we are, but you are relating, uh, you are putting out forth a truth that is um, very much needed and I think needed for people like myself that suddenly like discover, you know, this poetics and suddenly there's, there's a word, you know, that there's a mirror. Um, and then you know that you are real. And, um, and you are very much a living being. Um, and my notes here is like, um, so here, I'll, I'll, I'll say, um, your, yeah, the bonus track, boom. That was one of my, um, the one, that's the one that I hung up, hung with the most and really? stayed with. And, um, and also the, uh, the poem titled uh, Narcissus my, in, to Mother. Because mm -hmm. um, it's just, you know, it's truth. It's truth, it's truth. To be truth, to be poet is to be truth. And that's from June Jordan. And that's, bam, uh, that's something I, I, uh, I'm whole, whole, 
that's what a poetess is to be to be a poet is is to sing your truth and that's what you do um so she is ne a necessary voice beyond necessary so here there is lyric blooming the language a lyric that brings forth the body the black trans body aside from the poetics of the work there is possibility from the wound language is a wound and here language reckons with transformation the gusano becoming the monarch giving herself a language that transcends into giving more there is beauty there is pain I felt these things, the impossibility of you is the most incredible, beautiful thing. Everything that had to happen for you, that you that is here stems all the way back to the Big Bang, if you believe in the Big Bang. Here, you, Jay brings the entirety of who she is. And as I gaze upon her, I gaze upon her through the entirety what has made me. To me, lyric is one day. And Duende is speaking body into existence. And Duende is that fragment that we can't articulate, yet we articulate, transferring that onto the other. It is that space between word and mouth, word and space, that space between lines, space and line, the space between the howling and the silence, the silence that came before the howl and the silence after the howl. And that is not silence, but a guttural vibration in all our parts. Echo, you can call it an echo, but it's, it's more than that because it keeps going. The echo just keeps vibrating like dripples. Like that pounding of the ocean wave, what it brings and what it, it takes from the sand, constantly transforming rock to glass, shells to glass, to sound greens again. Here there is song, song that is the body, the body that is duende, sacred in all its forms, the body that is becoming. Here the duende is the space between you and I. In this space, we gaze at each other, recognizing each other. Um, and it's just, you know, there's so many moments in the work where so many places, you know, that I'm left dented. And I feel that it, it like, like every time I read a poem, I felt, you know, you know, when you're on a roller coaster and suddenly it drops, like boom, like every single poem, I felt mm. it did that. <laughs> boom. <laughs> like, okay, I'm there. Um, I just, Boom, I just slipped through. Um, there's like moments, it's like, okay, I might, the, I mean, like there's marks all over the place. Um, I need a word for if the dead can't dream. The earth finally swallowed all the graves into itself and sprouted wings jean shorts and neon body suits i mean that comes that comes from you and and um yeah so my body is a harmonic gospel i am the most beautiful broken clock tower um thank you Thank you, Jay. <laughs> we do have a question. Um, and yes, thank you, Lourdes, for that. Um, I wrote in the chat because i um, wondering like, if somography was a word. Um, English isn't my first language and Greek never was a language of mine. But there is this experience of like writing a body into existence um, in both of your work, I will say. Um, there is a question 
for Jay. And it's from Angel Dominguez, my homie. I would love to hear about the ways in which Jay's ever expanding constellational body of work connects across mediums. So poetry, essay, video, music, and beyond and what she's currently working on and how has the process of writing The Black Condition featuring Narcissus affected your, Jay, um, current creative processes? You know, Angel's a friend of mine, so they never been shady for such a basic question. Um, let's see. Uh, let that talk about the next question again. Um, well, I, 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 I believe that just out of the tradition of like my mother and uh, the ease that writing comes to me, I think writing will always be sort of this baseline medium that everything else springs from. But um, a reason for that, that I love a lot of the music is for like the lyrics and the songwriting. Um, and then also understanding like the body as a moving text, sort of mixed, mixed dancing, a kind of writing in my, in my head. Um, and so with, with, with all that documentation, is the next step for me. And I've decided that I'd like to look good at all times. And uh, documenting through video and expanding sort of what my text can do then made me want to obscure myself in new ways. And so, so much of my work, um, especially since my sisters, has been very glitched and distorted and, and navigating distortion. Because even in our sisters, the river, the river that our sister sees themselves in is moving, it's mire, it's not clear, it is distortion. And so uh, instead of dying by that distortion, I decided to follow that river out into this new place. So my current work is definitely sort of the end of the trilogy in many ways of, of these first two books. And it is this um, local woman who's entered the river valley and navigating womanhood and being moved to Portland from Detroit. Uh, most of the black condition takes place in Detroit where I was living and writing it. Um, also most of this book is written while I was an alcoholic. So it's, it's, I'm very far distance from this book now being over three years sober. Um, so yes, the fourth book, I mean, uh, sorry, <laughs> the third book, uh, uh, that's a finalist right now at, um, Kelsey Street um, is uh, is just is is the third entry in 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 this sort of like myth mythological trilogy. If Manish Tongues was the death of this black boy, if the black condition is the eulogy, um, my my third book, Getting Hungry, is me finding my way out of the wood into a new land as a new person, um, transfigured and ready for for action. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's sort of like the current um, J. Dodd cinematic universe that I'm working on. But uh, I make music for fun and I've made a lot of film work for my um, poetic projects. And so there are just so many visuals that go along with my work that can also exist on their own. And I make all the sonic for those visuals. So I, yeah, I'm a pretty expansive um, visual and sonic archive, but it's all because I wanted the work to do more than just live on the page. And um, and also, I don't pretend to write for everybody. So I want people to have access to my work in ways that make sense for them. And I'm pretty enough to convince you I'm right. So I don't have to always write it down. So yeah, I just pick and choose how I want people to enjoy me, actually. And it's all in the same tone, from the same vessel. Mm -hmm. Tremendous. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous. Um, I also had a question um, that you reminded me of, and you know, you talked about creating this new poetic meter. Oh, yeah, just, yeah, and if you could maybe talk a little bit about creating these new forms and these new ways. For sure. Um, your, yeah. So I just, for no number, I, I don't have an MFA. I, I want to take into like official writing, poetry writing classes in college. I've taught by the same dude and that's like, and then I was a literary finalist. But I taught 
poetry for for years and I just uh, I sort of like was really against form poems um as not on um, any deep principle but I just like did like rely on dead white dudes to frame our bodies and so you know if you have a form poem how else can you manipulate it but then you know I kind of got over myself and wanted to do do one you know if you can't beat them join them and so uh the the form, the form I created is called a Taurus sonnet um I'll hold it up on screen if someone wants to like um, screenshot or pause this for later. <laughs> but it's also uh, available on, on the website if you want to buy it. Um, but anyways, the way it works is that, uh, so X is the number of stanzas, 2X is the number of syllables per line, and 3X is the number of lines total. So it's a sonnet in that all of the lines have iambic, uh, or ha have a, um, have an iambic meter um, and and like the way normal sonnets are it's an iambic pentameter so that's five five two two footed beats um but I, I just vary it so for example if there's a uh, let's see so if there's um if there's six syllables on a line then it'll be three stanzas long and nine lines total for the people who do the math in their head all right um but yeah, that's that was the that was the sort of intention on making the the shape of it have have, have sort of like no politic or no poetic. So wherever you did had had to fit, but the way that it was all related was sort of unending. The reason it's called a tutor sonnet is because this shape here is like a donut is. A is it a Taurus? T O R U S. I want. I thought it was spelled like my sun sign, like the, the bull, but it's not. Um, and so, uh, I, 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 yeah, no. I, I'm very, I, I'm very simple and easy to impress. So I just had to figure out how to make it legitimate, and I did it. Um, I also am born the same day as Shakespeare, so I'm like, you know, competitive. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I wish. I, I wish it was deeper than that. I I I just like um, impressing myself, and others seem to respond. Any other thoughts or questions? Yeah, that is a very Taurian quality, by the way. Oh, period. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> absolutely. So, like, it's very Venusian, like, absolutely. Yeah. You know, my my, my rising is Libra, so I'm double. Venusian oh, kind of, yeah. 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 Oh, I'm nice. a Libra. I'm a Libra. See? I'm a Libra. Yeah, Loris is a Libra. I'm a Libra Work. rising. Works. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> a lot of Libra energy <laughs> in the house. So, um, all right. Any? Yes. <laughs> I like impressing myself and others. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> That's my mom, y'all. What up? Oh. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> Where it is. All right. Well, um, it's 8 19. Right. And I don't know if anyone else has any questions that they would like to ask. But if either of you have any closing thoughts or or if we just want to like I'm just again so honored uh, to be chosen and share the space and to be able to hear um, how my work is impacting people in real life because I really don't, I really don't know what to do anything. So I'm really glad to know that it's making uh, an impact in people's lives and navigating them forward in this otherwise tumultuous world. So I'm super, so grateful. Thank you all. Thank you for being the reason that we're here today. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. I'm just very grateful to have had the opportunity to read your work and to continue now to continue to read your work. And um, it's gonna go <laughs> above and beyond. So um, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Gracias okay. with all my heart. <laughs> Thank you all for everyone who was also like on behind the scenes setting up and sound and everything. I didn't get to everyone's name, but grateful for all your, 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 your backstage labor. It's so appreciated. Thank you for coming to the Poetry Center. Love setting up. Thank you. Yeah, so much. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Um, I guess we're, we're going to call it a night. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>